In this video, we're going to talk about Winter EDC and how to set up your system, or at least uh, how I set up my system, and some things that you might want to consider. So, the first thing we're going to go over is some specific items you might find yourself carrying in a Winter EDC, you know, with a jacket on or maybe uh, something heavy and uh, some considerations on clothing and uh, the item. But first off, we're going to start. Uh, with talking about specific items you're probably going to be carrying and then we'll move on to the clothing and how everything is stored and so on and so forth so this is just the winter EDC portion for you know cold weather stuff where you're really going to be layering up now first thing to go over is pretty much everything you have I would recommend that you're kind of qualified for lack of a better word to carry it uh, make sure that you're carrying a firearm that is you know a a firearm that you can shoot pretty well that you've selected a good ammo for the season and I carry at least one spare magazine usually that's really all I carry even if it's a single stack for the most part but I also have a knife it's a utility knife and it can uh, also be used as a defensive knife and you know you can get into blade styles and stuff like that and I can do a video in the future on that and I also have a handheld light. Now, sometimes I do carry a weapon light, but for the most part, like in winter, I'm wearing uh, clothing that can allow me to conceal a, a light like this, TK09. And uh, it's pretty good sized light. You're getting uh, about a thousand lumens out of this thing and runs off uh, two, one, two, three batteries. It's a pretty good light. But, uh, you know, I have taken a good amount of, uh, you know, time practicing and training for low light scenarios so that's something that you might want to consider if you have that skill then by all means use it if you can if you can get away with it you might end up carrying a smaller flashlight the next is you know medical stuff so if I was going to be carrying medical stuff I wouldn't be carrying you know all this stuff in pockets I actually have this ankle uh, medical kit from Lynx Defense these things are like $20-25 really good stuff lasted a, lasts a long time they don't really tend to rotate on your ankle at all they're pretty secure very easy to conceal uh, for the most part and I have like some gloves or whatever a bandage and a tourniquet and I can put other things in there as well like uh, you know some some boo boo pads or whatever you uh, whatever you want but I typically have like an extra pocket that I can use and uh, you know, it, it depends on what you want uh, to use, but uh, that's basically my layout. I do have a good amount of medical training and experience, and so I uh, use the basics uh, basically for a worst case scenario for myself or other people if something should happen. Not saying I'm <clears throat> thinking the apocalypse is going to happen right now or whatever, but if you have that skill, be prepared, you know. If that's something that you uh, would like to offer as an asset to the community, then by all means carry it. As long as you're qualified, don't just throw a tourniquet in your pocket and inspect you're going to know what to do when the time comes. So anyways, then you have other things like a wallet and keys and stuff like that. And all this is pretty relevant because it, it it's all, you're, you're going to have places where you're going to have to put everything. And so the next thing we're going to get into is pants like what kind of pants are you going to use and how you're going to store it so I'm just going to give you an example of uh, pants that I usually wear and uh, how I uh, set everything up so this is an example of a pant that I wear in the winter time this is uh, the uh, specialist pant uh, the tactical specialist pant from first tactical this is uh, one of their least expensive models but uh, basically it has a lot of storage in it it's very durable it's about uh, twice as durable as other cargo pants that I've used like say 5.11's or something like that and it has a good amount of storage and it's in nice it's in nice areas that are very intuitive and very easy to use so first thing is uh, let's go ahead and talk about our general items and the general principle so with all of our items for the most part uh, we want to stay away from our gun hand, right? Now, we're not going to talk about the medical uh, kit, though you can. Um, if I was just going to have that ankle medical kit on that you see on the other side here, I would have it on my support hand side. And that's so my gun hand is free to use my firearm draw it or whatever. Uh, if I'm do giving medical to someone, I might have my uh, firearm out or it should probably be at the ready. 
So when you're carrying, it's probably best to follow the principle of uh, keeping your gun hand free as much as possible. So the ankle medical kit, it's going to be on the uh, support uh, support side of the leg or support side ankle. So first thing for general EDC uh, pieces, keys. Now this is a, a problem uh, for the most part for uh, key storage because uh, unless I have these pants on I kind of got to use my gun side for my keys. Now of course I have to switch to my gun side in order to put the vehicle key into the ignition or something like that but generally speaking um, I, I basically would like to have this on my uh, support hand side. So what I do is I typically just put it inside this cargo pocket and inside this cargo pocket you have two extra pockets in here uh, that can actually hold full uh, capacity AR-15 mags. You can carry two 30 round magazines in each one of these little pockets in here. So you know it's got a good amount of storage inside these cargo pockets alone and I do utilize them but for my keys I just slip them in and they fall right to the bottom pretty secure they don't really get in the way pretty nice next thing is I take my wallet and I shove them in one of these pockets um, mostly the front pocket is where I store it and that pretty much does it for this pocket now on the on uh, the pocket up here this one also can carry a full 30 round uh, magazine AR magazine and what I do with this one is I actually put my light in here because once I put my light in here and it's all the way in the light basically comes up to here so it's actually very easy to reach for and then use from there get a nice pick grip and then deploy it as it were so in my actual big pocket I only have my spare mag so I just put that with the round pointing forward or to the right and then it just sits in that pocket and every now and then shove my hand in my pocket make sure that it's still faced in the right direction so the next place that I have is uh, basically it's mirrored on the other side as far as the pockets are concerned it's mirrored on the other side same setup I put my knife in this pocket same as the one that I have my flashlight in but the cool thing about these pants is for your knife clip this actually has a hole right in here for your uh, knife clip to go in so basically you slip your knife down and you put it into this hole right here and it protects your uh, protects you from you know snagging or scraping something with your knife clip because if you ever brush up against your vehicle or whatever, this little piece right here could actually do a bit of damage to your paint. And so these pants actually help cover that up. It's still very easy to get to and use. And since my knife hand is also my shooting hand, if I have to pull out my knife for utility purposes or whatever, then I'm fine to do that. It's my, it's my working hand, so to speak. So that's basically how I have my setup and of course I have my gun on this side and I typically don't have anything in this pocket and you know if you carry like dip or smokes or whatever then you have plenty of room in both um, on both sides or just put in your butt pocket or whatever so there's plenty of rooms uh, room in these pants and you can store a good amount of stuff in there and it actually works out pretty nicely so anyways Next, I'll go ahead and talk about the uh, top or the uh, basically the cover garment. The cover garment is one of the most important parts of your carry system because it's got to cover your firearm and hopefully prevent it from printing. Now, here I have my 229 in a Clinger Holsters No Print Wonder, and you can use uh, your cover garment in uh, several fashions. Like here, I have a coat that zipped from the front. I can have this thing loose and then sweep and draw that way or basically as I just had it have it nice and zipped up and uh, it's something that you'll have to practice to kind of see if it works but have it zipped up and then you pull it up just like if you had a hoodie or something. Now as I said you're going to have to practice with this and one of the things that I'll warn everybody about is basically your shirt whatever you're using it might want to kind of kick up a little bit around the firearm so when you go to grip it you're grabbing some t-shirt with it and uh, it just becomes a jumbled mess. Also, 
just put that away. As you can see, it's all exposed now. It's going to get in the way, and now I'm going to go grab some t-shirt with the gun. So that's a consideration. But anyways, you know, aside from that, on this one, it's a condor, it's a condor jacket, and you know, as it says right here, condor. Pretty nice jacket, has some spaces here, like typically I'll put like car keys right in here so I can do whatever I need to and use my non-gun hand, my support hand, to grab keys. You have some pretty deep pockets that go down to about here, and you can carry a mag in here or something like that, but uh, and if you're carrying it, if you're wearing this like so to where you can sweep and grab your firearm, then this might not be the best place to have a magazine. I would want to keep this relatively loose and obviously nothing in here, you know, so uh, basically you don't have to use your gun hand uh, in order to reach into your pocket. Always keep this thing free. Now it may sound a little paranoid, but this is a basic thing that you, uh, you practice every day because you get in the habit of making good choices and always keeping your gun hand free is the best option so you don't have to drop anything but of course it's not a perfect world but we do the best we can right now with this you have little adjustment straps right here and this is not something that you want to have on your coat because it can snag on your firearm it has uh, snagged for me and also if you have a hoodie you might have those two drawstrings well typically we never even use those right for the most part, we never even use those, so I would just cut those off. Like if it's centered on the back of your hood, on your hoodie or something. Hoodie is one of my favorite uh, ways to conceal a firearm, uh, but uh, typically a size bigger, a little baggy is fine. Not like gangster baggy, but you know, good enough. Then you know, I would basically, if it's secured at the center of the back of the hoodie, I would cinch it up as uh, high as I can get, and then cut it as close as I can and then you're good. You don't want to have things flopping in your face and stuff like that and uh, all over the place. Uh, you can actually get whacked in the eye like I did when I was practicing with a hoodie. I had those little drawstrings and even if you have a, a zip up front uh, jacket, if you have drawstrings that might get in the way, these ones aren't exactly going to get in the way but these are for tightening the hoodie. So uh, you have little drawstrings here for tightening the hoodie that you can actually tuck away on this thing. It's a pretty nice jacket but you know, you got to work with uh, your equipment and make sure that it works. And this one, I'm going to have to cut off these, uh, uh, these straps right here. I never use it to tighten my waistband or anything like that, and I wouldn't want it tightened anyways. And unfortunately for those of you who like to appendix carry, this is probably not the kind of jacket that you want to use for appendix carry unless you have no ass. Because my ass gets in the way of me being able to actually like get it up far enough. Uh, if I'm just drawing there and uh, getting it up far enough and out of the way. See, I can pull it to here, but this would not be enough. But going this way, it goes up around my butt, and then I'm able to pull it up as high as I need to. So you just got to work with your gear and, you know, see what works for you. But try it in different ways, you know, bent over, hunched over, and you'll probably see the advantages and disadvantages. Don't just do that static range crap. You know, you actually got to get out there and work with your gear if you're going to be an asset. If not, you're a liability. But, you know, that's just my my way of thinking. But, anyways, this is just my basic, you know, EDC. You know, it's a winter EDC system. But uh, if I was going to wear a hoodie, I probably wouldn't have a t-shirt under it, most likely. No, I, I just wouldn't. Um, but uh, that way I don't have anything uh, getting in the way of my gun or something that I would grab with the gun. You know stuff like that but uh, let me know what your EDC is but uh, anyways I appreciate you guys watching and you guys have a good one